Welcome to the channel, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Emotional incest. Awareness. Case. Single mother. So you've met a single mother and she's enmeshed with her adult children. And what will happen is the adult child, be it possibly a golden child or some kind of grandiose, idealised male who's been pedestalised and given the mini-husband role by the mother is beginning now to deteriorate because your presence has shifted the attention so far away from him, he's starting to psych psychologically deteriorate. And he knows it because he needs his mummy. Now, what's going to start to happen is the whole dimension in which this relationship is functioning is about to change. If you were a fly on the wall behind the scenes, you would see the attacks and assaults that the mother would be under from these people to try and vandalise you. And this has nothing to do, hopefully, with you. If you've been integral and moral and you've just come along to have a relationship and now you're dealing with the dysfunctional domestic formation of these people and you haven't interfered with that, or changed anything about that except having a relationship with the adult parent, with the parent, then whatever happens between the parent and the adult children is completely and utterly between the parent and the adult child. And the reason why I think that you, you need to step back and step back fast is because I remember as this adult, grandiose, narcissistic, golden child, pedestalized son, was deteriorating. I said to the mother, well, well, you might have to have a talk to this person. So we did have a talk. But the talk culminated in a psychological collapse, which trying to vandalize my character by way of duress, a duress performance by the golden child, which the mother witnessed. She was sitting there when it happened. And at the end of this conversation, I more or less had to say to this person, am I a good person to you or a bad person? And it was so complex for this guy because he wasn't used to being put in a corner, as it were, to go against his feigning, duress feigning. The problem with the fact of the matter was he'd had enough of his mother's attention being taken away from him by her boyfriend. So his answer was, yeah, you're one of the good guys. And then he immediately went inside and deleted me off his Facebook account which said to me, this guy's a bullshit artist. This guy ain't telling the truth. His mother was standing there. Well, I got this... I, um, I realised at this point I'm dealing with some very dysfunctional people here. She's not prepared to create any order because she's under the authority of this golden child son. And I'm more or less just out in the... Out in the, left out in the open here um, and quite frankly to be honest the, she's just allowed this person to completely um, be rude to me now the problem with this was he was using his feigning and duress to make out that I was being some kind of wicked and cruel person and the mother couldn't translate this she could see it she could see it, but she wasn't able to accept that I wasn't the problem. 
and I'm watching these people, and I'm just thinking, these people are so enmeshed, and this is where emotional incest is really dangerous. These people are so enmeshed, she's buying into the manipulate, like, serial manipulation of the golden, grandiose son. Because a lot of these single mothers will hand over their authority to these adult sons and allow them to become their mini husbands. And when somebody comes along and the mother's interested in that person, they break down psychologically and the only way they can attempt to fix it is by vandalising the boyfriend emotionally or characteristically vandalising the boyfriend in the mind of the mother. Now, the mother will struggle with this because they know these adult children aren't fully developed and they've got infantile characteristic and personality flaws. Um, but, as you know, mothers defend their children and you know, the children just can't be wrong and they'll do this to the expense of their relationship. And this comes down to you having to make a decision about whether you're going to stay in the relationship or not. And so... I watched what happened here and I noticed that the mother didn't do anything at all. So I said to her, I'm out of here. I've, I'm, I've got to go. There's no integrity here. She had no idea on how to set boundaries and I cashed out on the relationship. I just thought, I'm not dealing with this dysfunction, this offensiveness, this feigning, this desperateness for this boy to get his mum back. It was so deep and so savage and so enmeshed and out of order. This this guy had deteriorated so bad. He could not stand his mother not showing him attention and losing that attention by way of her having a boyfriend. Now, this might be treading on corns or this might be really speaking to somebody that needs to hear this, but... This is how it works. They cannot get past the enmeshment. So I left the relationship and I never heard a word from, the, from this woman. She did nothing, absolutely nothing. She was too bewitched by the infantile behaviour of the son. And I mean, it was gross. It was, it was evil. Evil's the only word I can put on it. To cut a long story short, we just I got back in contact with this woman and we had a talk and we decided that, well, you know, she, she can't manage this child, this adult child. Um, maybe we can continue the relationship with her just coming to my place. So we tried that and I thought, and I said, in the meantime, we might be able to sort something out. Well, what the problem was, in the long run, cutting a long story short, the golden child was a narcissist, and probably more than that. I don't know. I'm not a. I'm not, you know, going to diagnose this person. But what I do know was he was a severely hostile, self-centered, um, cruel uh, brat, sort of a sort of a bloke, very self-centred in his own... He had no right to judge me. He had nothing on me. But in his determination to get rid of me, he just became a hostile, rude little brat in, an, a, in, a, in a, a man's body. And I warned her, I said, if you, if you allow these people of yours to interfere with who I am and what's going on, you'll be kicked to the curb. And she knew this was a possibility, but she wanted the supply. She wanted the A-grade supply. She wasn't used to it. 
So then I'm watching this situation and I'm going, hang on a sec. She'd be under all sorts of attack, pressure and assault for going against the golden child who didn't want her to see me by no reason except his own selfish need to have his mummy. It had nothing to do with me, whatever the problem was. I'm going, hang on a sec, this woman's got the capability to stay on side with them domestically but go against them intimately. There was an element of rebellion in that that I wasn't comfortable with because she wouldn't bring things into order. I, I couldn't go to her place because these people just wouldn't be able to cope with my presence. So she's coming to my place and not resolving anything, so she's turning up physically, but mentally and emotionally she's split. She's got no loyalty, as it were, with any order. She's more or less just suiting herself with the sons but keeping them on side and suiting herself with me just enough to keep me on side, but there was a problem. I'm trying to build a relationship and you can't build a relationship with somebody that fails to resolve. So she was beginning to come across to me as spineless like the sun was because she didn't know or didn't want to bring order to the relationship in a way in which everybody could just plot along. And her way with, to deal with that was to isolate me from her house because these adult men lived in her house. So my message to her was, well, you're testing my tolerance because... Oh, right, you know, it wouldn't hurt you to cook me dinner at your place once a week or whatever um, and get me in, in, you know, in your bed for to in a territorial sort of way. And she wouldn't do it. And this said to me, this woman's trouble. Right? I got trouble here. This, this is not how normal women work. This is really unusual. And this showed me that ultimately... Her authority was that golden child, and I was just a source of supply. And this reflected covert narcissism. Now I've got a covert narcissistic partner and an overt narcissistic golden child son. Now, I met this person on a dating site and I just lost a marriage over um, emotional, incestual, narcissistic mother and son who I had to divorce. I divorced her, kicked her out of him and her out of the house and ended up divorcing her. She was hopeless. Same situation, exactly the same situation. But this woman... Um, <clears throat> She was trying to hang on, but what she didn't realise is, and I'm not sure why, well, I am, I've got a bit of an idea. She'd been in a relationship with an alcoholic and probably a drug addict and a weirdo. She had no idea of choosing people. She was very naive for all the wittiness that she had. Um, but there was other, other stuff... Um, that was going on that was affecting these people's minds by way of substance. And I was straight, so I'm fully watching this and calculating it and assessing it and diagnosing it as we're going along. And I'm watching the way in which this lady's navigating this and I'm going, okay, so she's not solving the issue for me and the relationship. So she's got limited value when it all comes down to it on the relationship. She, she will fall back to her default if I put the pressure on. 
she'll just go back to her sons and be comfortable with that. It's all predictable. They go back to their default and become zero and just find somebody else and get ran through and kicked to the curb and whatever happens to them. They're very, very selfish. They don't appear to be, but they are because they just don't fix anything. And that's spineless as well. And I told her she was spineless. Because they just waste your time. They're just coming to get their fuel, their narcissistic supply, and then disappear. You're just a, a means to no end. It's, it's, it's really, really subtle. It's demonic. Um, but this is what's happening out there. They don't incorporate you into their life. They'll come into your world. But once they walk out your gate, you don't even know where they are or what they're doing half the time. It's disgraceful. And by the way, this was the shortest and, and most ridiculous relationship I'd ever had watching the way this unfolded. You've got this triangulation going on through the enmeshment, the emotional, emotional incest, and you've more or less got this person running the relationship that's not even in it. So what happens when this manifests is you, you begin, I don't care how tough you are, but if you allow it to go on, your mind begins to go into trauma because you're struggling with why can't this person <laughs> just bring some order to this situation? Well, the fact of the matter is they don't want to. They're just going to play it for as long as they can until they get booted up the ass and told to go, and that'll be it. And that's exactly how it was. She got to the point, got me to the point where I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. She was coming here and, you know, there was no involvement in her life. We used to go for walks along the waterfront and spend time together down there. And this, this person was so degenerate in the enmeshment, um, the golden child, that it completely sabotaged 50% of the relationship. And she didn't care. Oh, no, she's coming over here and enjoying herself and all the rest of it. No input from her side of it, from where she lived or anything. And you might say, well... The son didn't want you to go there, but that's not the point. The point is she was the main main um, source of financial supply and all the rest of it, but she didn't have the backbone to stand for her relationship, which tells you a lot about the character of the person and pull this person into line who had nothing to do with it because she was under con the control of the golden child. Now I knew this and I was watching it. And I, I um, thought this woman, I don't know how to describe it. Why is she coming here when she knows she's going to be told to go, eventually told to go? Because she's told she needs to sort it out. Well, to cut a long story short, right at the end of it, I said, look, my mind can't take this anymore. It, it, it's just... This is just not how a relationship's supposed to be. And I can meet somebody that I could go and have dinner at their place once a week or twice a week and swap it around a bit. You're absolutely contributing nothing, nothing. And she's probably thinking, well, I can't upset so-and-so. Rather, I'm think when well, I'm thinking, screw so-and-so, whoever, whatever the problem is there, which was emotional incest, and she turned around and said, well, it's why didn't you fix it? Well, what she failed to realise was I did try and fix it and the, the golden child broke down. Basically, and the message behind that was, this ain't going to be fixed, mate. And he just broke down. Which was the, where I started this talk. And so she said, why didn't you fix it? Well, it was never up to me to fix. Now, I went and got some advice and 
I was getting advice because I couldn't work out why this woman kept turning up. And I definitely knew it wasn't love. There was something missing because she wasn't resolving anything. So it wasn't love. Unresolve can give you the answers to so many things quick if you just take notice of it. So I let this woman, I I don't let women get away much. I thought, I'm going to watch what happens here. I let it go for nine or ten months. And oh, it was it was quite bizarre. We we had a family event coming up, and the golden child and the scapegoat weren't going to go. And then right at the end, I said, "We'll see." I thought to myself, "Yeah, we'll see. They'll go, and they should go because it was their mother, grandmother's eightieth birthday party, and I didn't want to inter- interfere with that." But I could see this woman starting to disintegrate a bit. She wasn't coping. I had a YouTube channel started and it was relative to female behaviour and I could see she was getting uncomfortable with that. It was exposing her a little bit and um, that was causing a little bit of uncomfortableness. And I said to her, don't take any notice of this. It's got nothing to do with you. But you could see that she was struggling. Um, And... I noticed that her substance abuse had risen. She's coming here, and I told her not to come here stoned. She started coming here stoned. I'm thinking, you little bitch, what are you? You're falling to pieces. And I'm thinking, this is all coming to an end. And we were actually trying to get a bit closer, but I think she was showing me more or less. Look, I'm just a, I'm just a dope smoker, and you know, you're not really going to be able to build anything with me. And I'm thinking, you bet I'm not. Look at you. This is not representing where the relationship's at. And at this point, I'm starting to think, because she couldn't resolve the issue and it was bringing aggravation to her, she was probably starting to find some soothing away from this needing, this unresolve outside of what she was doing with me, something, and this woman's starting to fall to pieces and this is what unresolved does to people when they don't deal with it it just erodes their relationships so I'm watching this and I'm starting to deteriorate myself I'm thinking this woman just won't resolve anything so this family event comes up and she just wasn't right there was something wrong and I don't think it had anything to do with going to the mother's event or anything. I think there was more going on outside the relationship, just in me gut, in me spirit, than what she was being transparent about, which added up with the whole way in which she hadn't dealt with anything in the relationship. Now she's starting to move away from it because it's all too much. This is the impression I got. So I said, yeah, well, that's great. They can... They should go to the this family event, but I'm not going to be able to go because there's too much unresolved. And she said to me, well, I thought we could all go together. And I said, oh, no, it's all right. They, they can go. And I said, you know, you'll never be able to hurt me with whatever's going on here because none of it was rational or, or ordinary or normal. It was all dysfunctional to boot. And I said to her, you know, this, this this, just hasn't been resolved. So I rang her up later because when she left, she was all happy about it. Oh, we can all, we, you know, you just sit on the sideline and me and my boys will go along. And I thought, you bitch, this is what you're like. I wasn't going to go because there was too much unresolved. These boys needed to sit down with my boys and me and get some truths out. Right? She wasn't going to have that. So I rang her up and I said, you know, this has really got, this is this is just head fuckery to me. I've just, I've had enough of it. And she goes, well, why didn't you fix it? And I thought to myself, all along throughout that whole nine months from that event where we had that talk and the golden child disintegrated, she'd subconsciously been blaming me all along. 
for the whole event. So my response to her was, I think you need to come and get your shit and fuck off. And go. Now, this is the interesting part, and I need you to listen to this. Because this would be helping someone, someone somewhere in the world. She was unable to fix the unresolved by just saying, look, this is my man and we can all get along. You're the one with the problem.